asked me to uh, come up with some information, some, uh, some uh, material about them. So I've been talking to a lot of their friends, talking to their family, and very much you know, delved into like, who these people are. And, you know, it's, it's been really interesting. I've uh, learned a lot about Mary. It turns out that uh, she's not the sweet, demure, nice person that we all thought. She's actually a, a real wild child back in high school. And, um, you know, uh, back, uh, back in high school, she and a bunch of friends went down to Keener Plaza, and uh, they, they, they put a diaper on the uh, statue in the, um, in the fountain. Actually, she, uh, she went back the uh, next day, and it turns out it wasn't so much that she diapered the statue as she diapered the guy sleeping under the statue. Uh, really, it was great for him. It was the most action that he had gotten all week. You know, she, she, she used to take these, these uh, road trips with uh, Father Megan. She'd take these, uh, oh these like, uh, church road trips. And, uh, and she, you know, apparently one way or another, Mary would end up with a bottle of alcohol. She didn't, she, she, she didn't exactly do a lot of church activity there, except for she'd wake up and just pray to God her hangover would go away. <laughs> there was, uh, Mary, Mary's first car was a, uh, was a yellow Volkswagen. And when she picked it up, uh, she realized that she didn't know how to drive a manual transmission. So she ended up dating a bunch of guys who knew how to drive the car, which became uh, a long and standing uh, career of Mary uh, meeting guys with uh, good stick technique. <laughs> Mary was also into, uh, into drawing. She, uh, she, got into, she, she got into art. Actually, Mary, Mary got into art because she was more interested in uh, figure drawing and in, um, you know, being in a room with a bunch of naked guys. But, uh, and actually, uh, I, I talked to her school, and I got uh, some of her, of her early work. So, actually, she, she didn't actually so much draw the guys, as she just kind of drew what was on her mind. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I mean, really, nobody understands this one. <laughs> Good for Mary. You know, Mary, uh, Mary wasn't too much into work too. Like she, was, uh, when she was a teen. She would like try to get out of housework in any, any way. She'd act like she was sick, or she'd uh, she'd go over to a friend's house. And as a matter of fact, when her family heard about the car accident, she they just figured she wanted a couple days off work to go shopping. <laughs> but uh, she, she, you know, we all think of Mary as this kind and uh, really really nice person. But it turns out that she has this whole double life. Yeah, Mary's really into the whole dominatrix scene. <laughs> uh, it's true, it's true. Well, I mean, uh, you know, and I found out, I found this out quite by accident. I was talking to, to Miles and just said, man, you are whipped. And he said, why, what pictures have you been looking at? <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, it turns out that Mary, Mary has more leather than a Holstein cow. And, uh, and that's why, that's why nobody was invited to the wedding. You know, the whole thing was a whole s and charade completely orchestrated by Mary. <laughs> the, all those photos that they're showing around, they were just staged. In fact, in fact at, at the real wedding, Mary came like riding in on Miles, who was dressed in full <laughs> You know, he, he looked like the gimp from uh, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Chains him up, and like uh, she's in the back, you know, reading the, uh, reading the vows. You will love me! You will respect me! <laughs> Miles is back there, wow, love really does hurt. <laughs> you know, and of course we all know, know Miles is really a very together and, um, well, eight over ten type of guy. But, uh, <laughs> kind of wondering when this all started, and uh, it turns out that it was, I mean, you know, he was like that from the get-go. And when, when he was a little kid, he was like two years old, he like punched his brother right in the nose. Um, turns out it was, it was because his brother got his toys out of alphabetical order. <laughs> Later, Miles started to build a lot of little toy cars. And, uh, back then, nobody understood why he liked to go out and you know throw them against telephone poles. Oh, oh, come on, that is the best worst joke I'll ever hear. I'm not gonna do the next one then. If you're growing in that, I'm not gonna do the encephalitis joke. But, uh, um, Miles, when he was 20, like, or what, 25, had this cabin out in uh, West Virginia, was it? You know, lived in this tiny little cabin way out in the woods. 
he worked as a, as a recruiter for a college, but actually most of the time was spent recruiting high school girls to come back to the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> and his his, his uh, big pickup line was, uh, you can scream as loud as you want, I don't have any neighbors. <laughs> you know, he didn't have like HBO or anything, but every so often a wild turkey would come out of the woods and nail one of the hands, so that was kind of a for him. <laughs> You know, Miles, I talked to some people at work that uh, work with, with Miles, and, um, you, you know, they said at work he's an easygoing, you know, anything goes type of guy, you know, nothing, uh, you know, nothing bothers him, everything rolls off his back, and at least that's what they said. You know, everybody has, like, pictures on their desk of, like, their families for inspiration. Uh, Miles has pictures of uh, Joseph Stalin, Kuba Khan, and Vladimir the Destroyer. <laughs> I tell you that. He, uh, you know, and he uh, he travels a lot. You know, that's that's kind of cool. But it turns out that the guys at work are actually paying for these vacations. They're like, here, well, I'll just go to Africa for a year. Okay? <laughs> you know, they must really like you. Where did they send you last time? Cambodia. You know, these these guys are like scouring the paper, looking for hot spots in the world. There's trouble in the Middle East. Call the travel agent. Hi, guys. You know, Miles is, he's a cool guy, you know, I don't want to say that he, he has like a superiority complex, but um, over at his house, he's got a, a mirror right now next to a picture of Jesus, and he's always getting confused. With oh, God. So, you know, he, uh, he, just, uh, he just got finished working on the, uh, on the pension fund. He, uh, he was working on the New City Pension Fund. And, um, you know, unfortunately, most of the other guys that he was on that with couldn't be here. They're all doing 7 to 10 at the Jeff City Pen. And, uh, you know, and Miles said the job was kind of a pain in the neck, probably because they were paying him to look the other way all the time. Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, come on, don't make me lose my place. You better laugh. Yeah, he, uh, I, I guess it was pretty tedious work. A lot of it consisted of uh, dropping off, um, you know, uh, attache cases at the bus station or filling envelopes with hundred dollar bills for Johnny Three, the Three Fingers Torelli. Uh, actually, I think he, I think he actually got out of that because he was just tired of cleaning the horse heads out of his bed every morning. Okay, that was a, uh, that was a Godfather reference. So we, uh, guess what we. we we got some people from the uh, UIO here tonight. So, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. That was your cue to clap, but that's okay. For those of you who, who don't know what the uh, UIO is, it's, it's like a personal growth class. And, um, you know, it really worked for Miles because before he went in, he was only 5'7. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, it took, it took uh, Mike Hughes a couple of years to actually to get Miles enrolled in that. He, Miles was like convinced it was some sort of cult or something. <laughs> but, you know, after the mind control and electroshock therapy, we really came around to our, to our way of thinking. I really appreciate that. And, you know, we could tell that, that Miles was like way into protection when, uh, when he went in, when he took the course, because he was the first guy to actually bring in a uh, stack of restraining orders. <laughs> But he really opened up. He's, you know, he's a lot more touchy feeling now. I mean, the only thing you got to worry about is when he gives you a hug, he might just take your wallet. <laughs> I guess, um, I guess what we all know about, um, about uh, Miles's accident, right? Yeah. Uh, you know that happens. <laughs> oh, I wasn't talking about the car crash. He just pissed himself a little while ago. <laughs> No, it's fine. We slapped on it. Depends. He's fine. Uh, but actually, uh, I don't know if, if anybody saw his car before the accident. I mean, it was a really cool, cool-looking car. And if, if you didn't see it, I actually I brought it with me. <laughs> Take a look at that one later. You know, there's a lot of theories as to what actually happened that night on the road. Now, as, as Miles will tell you, he took the corner too too fast and slid out. But the police said that there was gravel and oil on the road, and a, uh, and a witness told me that he thought he that he thought he heard a car a uh, tire pop. But um, oh, come on, we all know the mayor was just blowing him. Oh! <laughs> Actually, the uh... oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> what I heard was that. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> and a plus fell over the room. Come on, lay it down, lay it down. Come on. Come on. You know, Miles just leaned over to Mary right before the accident and said, You know why? I saw this on a cartoon. Let's give it a try. I've been suspect about the entire about the entire uh, accident thing because the day before it happened, Miles called me up and said, uh, "You know, I think I figured out how to get a free a free helicopter ride." <laughs> but, um, as the story goes, though, right after the accident, uh, Mary Mary leans over to Miles to see if he, he's okay, and Miles looks up at her and catches a reflection of himself in a piece of shattered glass, and he says, "Can I borrow a comb? Because I think my hair is kind of..." Uh, you know, but actually at that point, Mary was already, shh, you know, she's on, on her hair, and, um, you know, I talked to, uh, talked to the, uh, uh, the firemen, and they said that uh, they were worried about an explosion, not from the gas, from all the hairspray. <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of funny, because a couple weeks later, when my, when Miles finally woke up in the hospital, his first words were, hey, where's that damn comb I asked you for? <laughs> but, um, you know, when he, uh, when he first went into the hospital, when he first, first came in, you know, it was touch and go there for, for, for a while. And he, um, they're actually on the, on the table, his, his heart stopped. And uh, Miles, Miles told me that during that time, this like spectral being came to him, and promised him, made a promise to him that he could take him to a place of eternal happiness and, and, uh, and never ending love. And Miles said that sounded good, but he needed to see that in writing. <laughs> and otherwise, uh, back to earth with you. Um, you know, I don't know if, uh, if, if, if everybody uh, visited Miles uh, shortly after the accident, but um, I actually brought a, brought a, a picture of, of, of him just to show you how really far he's come since then. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a little sensitive, so prepare yourself. But this is, this is how, how, how Miles looked uh, right after the accident. This is um, <laughs> much, as you can see, he's a little bloated, but really none the worse for wear. Yeah. Um, actually, it, it, you know, when, when Mary was first talking to the doctor, she just thought that they were very, being very, very complimentary of his, of his pri of his prognosis. But it turned out that he really did have huge balls. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, you know, also Mary was uh, Mary was a little bit worried about um, you know things working okay below the belt. So uh, <laughs> one night when uh, she thought nobody was uh, was paying attention, she went in to kind of check Miles's plumbing. But uh, the thing is that she forgot about is that he was hooked up to a to, to an EEG. So I called the hospital and they uh, they, they they actually uh, sent me some of uh, Miles's stuff. So, here is uh, here is Miles' uh, normal EEG rhythm. This is uh, this is the average, and um, of course then uh, Mary <laughs> did a little, little work on that. And this is pretty much what was going on there. And uh, <laughs> actually, uh, then uh, shortly there uh, thereafter, this is uh, this is uh, rhythm right after that. But, uh, you know, I'm no expert in. Uh, medicine, but it uh, looks like everything's okay from here. <laughs> He's got that going for him. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, um, you know, I think it's kind of funny because a lot of UIO people came in for like a, uh, a prayer vigil uh, while, while, he was, uh, while, while he was under, and uh, they, they accidentally left that Spirit of Love CD playing for like two days, and uh, you know, it turns out that Miles actually did, actually did wake up, but uh, after hearing the rose for 47 times, he knocked himself out with his own ID box. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're all worried about uh, Miles and um, you know, whether or not he was going to be back fully, you know, uh, head injury, and uh, you know, it yeah. turns out that he's fine, except for the. There was one small episode one day he put on a tie dye shirt and claimed to be the reincarnation of Jerry Garcia. <laughs> and the orderlies actually found him out in the, uh, in the parking lot trying to hotwire a VW bus. <laughs> but you know, apparently he's back 100% now, except for the fact that he hired me to come and make fun of him. Like, I'm as fun as that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Miles says that he owes a lot of. Uh, a lot of credit to uh, Dr. Wagner for uh, for helping him. And uh, you know this 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 guy did a lot of work with uh, like uh, math problems and you know getting his mental capacity back. And it was kind of slow going there for, for a while until he gave Miles a, a hustler. And then really his uh, mental capacity and his focus just came just came 
and it came right back. You know, and that, that kind of explains, because he went back to work and only worked six hours a week. But uh, not a lot of people know that three of those six hours were spent uh, surfing the internet for uh, pornography. <laughs> really more for him. Uh, Mo said, like, the, the, the only fun thing that really came out of the whole accident is that he got a, uh, he got a, a handicapped parking sticker. And uh, he's actually still still using it. You know, uh, I, I, I saw him over at, uh, at the theater the other day, and, uh, you know, he gets his great parking spot, and Mike has to make up his own handicap. <laughs> Uh, you know, and uh, now Mary, uh, Mary's talking about, uh, or Miles is talking about getting a new Porsche. And, you know, Mary, Mary's, Mary's pretty cool with that. She just says that uh, he, can't, uh, he can't drive on any roads that uh, don't have Barry telephone lines. <laughs> that. You know, we all, uh, we all had our own specific reasons why we you know, wanted Miles to be better. And, you know, I talked to, uh, to a lot of people who... Know, talked about all the all the things that they wanted Miles bad for, and um, you know it's a it was a pretty big list, but I was uh, actually able to uh, narrow that list down to ten. So here are the uh, the top ten reasons that we wanted Miles back and uh, and uh, healthy again. Okay. So might have seen some of these at the hospital. <clears throat> okay, these are the uh, top ten reasons for Miles to get better soon. Number ten, get well soon. Danny's starting to move in on your check. <laughs> Number nine, we've got a hankering for booze, and we've got your checkbook. Number eight, the really, really, really hot nurses only give sponge baths to guys who are out of ICU. <laughs> Number seven, in your absence, Mike Hughes is spreading dirty rumors about you around the office. <laughs> Number six, what's the point of all those good drugs if you're not awake to enjoy them? <laughs> Number five, people have stopped bringing food to the rating room, so there's really no reason to keep showing up there anymore. <laughs> Number four, we're sick of you, see, uh, you stealing the UIO spotlight and we want to get back to complaining about our little problem. <laughs> Number three, we've all vowed to stop having sex until you get better and it's getting us pretty goddamn irritable. <laughs> Number two, I recognize your doctor as the transient I sold the fake diploma to back in 87. <laughs> And the number one reason for Miles to get better soon was a group of swimsuit models are getting breast augmentations right down the hall and you're missing the whole damn show. <laughs> that, was, that was nice. The, uh, <laughs> finally, finally, um, you know, a lot of people know that uh, Miles and Mary were set up on a blind date. Um, what, they, what they don't know is that uh, at the restaurant where they went uh, on, their, on their first date, uh, we had planted a tape recorder. And uh, what I have here is some of the actual dialogue for Miles and Mary's first date. So I'd like to I'd like to read part of that to you. Okay, starts with Miles. <clears throat> Miles, hi, I'm Miles. You must be you must be Mary. Mary, yes, I am. Nice to meet you. Miles, nice to meet you too. Sorry I was late, but I had to stop at the store and pick up some cleaning products. Mary, oh, Miles, yeah, I found some dust under one of my tiles in my kitchen floor. <laughs> and he starts talking. Mary, you okay? Miles, yeah, I was just cleaning my, my, my cats today. Mary, oh, are you allergic? Miles, no, I just haven't coughed up all, the, all their hair yet. <laughs> Mary, wow, you must really like, like your cats. Miles, yeah, as a matter of fact, they've got papers. Mary, oh, you mean they're, they're show cats? Miles, no, I made them sign, sign an agreement not to mess up my house before I let them move in. By the way, that's a very uh, lovely dress that, that, that you're wearing, Mary. Mary, thanks. I almost uh, thought about changing it be before you showed up. Miles, oh, you mean you're going to run back to your home and change? Mary, no, don't be silly. I converted the back seat of my car into a mobile closet. <laughs> I carry about 17 changes of clothes with me at, at, at all times. My trunk folds out into a cedar storage unit with a full length three sided mirror. Miles, wow, what a great idea. I should do that. <laughs> Mary, yeah, I'm thinking about getting a bigger car so I can have a hair salon in there, too. <laughs> Miles, you mean you're going to start traveling around with a hair salon? Mary, no, I've always had the salon. I'm just getting really tired of having to pull it around in a rented U-Haul. <laughs> Miles, you know, you look a little uncomfortable. Are, uh, are you okay? Mary, oh, sure, it's just been about 45 minutes since I bought something, and I'm starting to have a little bit of a withdrawal. <laughs> and, and then the, uh, the waiter comes. Can I take your order, please? Miles, sure, Mary, what would, what would you like? Mary, I'll have one leaf of lettuce, please. <laughs> Waiter, oh, one leaf of lettuce? Would you like anything with that? Some dressing, maybe? Mary, oh, goodness, no, just bring me a doggy bag for what I don't finish. <laughs> Waiter, would you maybe like an appetizer, ma'am? Mary, yes, and 
Just an ice cube. Wait, you mean ice water? No, just an ice cube. Bring it, drop it in my mouth. I'll tie me over till till uh, dinner. Waiter, yes, ma'am. And you, sir? Miles. Well, I'm interested in the salmon, but I want it fresh, not frozen. And I want Pacific salmon because I can't stand Atlantic salmon. And I like it on its own place with a sprig of garnish on the left side. Not the right side, I like the garnish on the left side. And that's the left side facing me, not facing no way. Now, I like it cooked just until the hydrogen molecules in the center of the fish start to bond with the protein molecules and not a second longer. Also, on a separate plate, I'd like some new potatoes sliced, sliced lengthwise with butter, not margarine, and salt, not pepper. And place that in the three o'clock position to the salmon when you bring it to the table. Uh, would you like anything else, sir? No, just bring me the kitchen's latest health inspection report. The health report? Hey, whenever you get a sec, I'm easy. Waiter, thank you. Miles, hey Mary, I think that waiter had a real attitude. Mary, yeah, he, uh oh, Miles, what's wrong? Mary, I think, yeah, it feels like I have a hair out of place. Would you check? Well, I don't see, oh yeah, there it is. Mary, I bet it's number 778 and second G. That one always gives me trouble. Would you excuse me? I'm gonna run out to my car and have it taken care of. I'll be back in just a sec. Miles, wow, what a woman. Hey, folks, thanks a lot. I appreciate it.